Hello again, and we are going to learn about earthquakes today. We uh, talked about the three kinds of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, and then we also talked about something called tectonic plates. And so we're moving on with our rock study. This is uh, to the table of contents. That means it's a true story or a true book, nonfiction. Chapter one, shake, rattle, and roll. Lots of kids know what it's like to be in an earthquake. It can be scary. An earthquake is a sudden shaking and rolling of the ground due to the movements of the Earth's outer layer. It's like being on a bumpy roller coaster ride. However, things may be falling all around you. Earthquakes happen when two big blocks of rock slide past each other. The rocks act like giant rubber bands being stretched and stretched, then suddenly snap. Let's explore. To understand earthquakes, you have to explore inside the earth. So maybe you've had a piece of candy that looks like this, gobstopper or a jawbreaker. We can use that idea to understand how our earth looks like on the inside. Um, point to the crust in the earth below. It's that rocky outer part. Then uh, the crust is made up of huge pieces like a puzzle called plates. You can't dig through the crust because it's too thick. If you could, you would hit the mantle, which is the next layer. It's made of melted rock. And uh, the plates of the Earth's crust float on a sea of thick, gooey, melty rock. Sometimes they bump into each other. So it's kind of like a puzzle, all the pieces bump into each other. And if you want to know where Fresno is, Fresno is right here. And we are very close. Eh, like 70 plus miles, 80 plus, uh, 200 miles away from one of those plates. Danger zones. Earthquakes happen where two plates in the crust bump together. At the edge of some plates are faults or fractures in the Earth's crust. Most earthquakes happen when two plates slide along each other. Instead of pushing this way, they slide back and forth, back and forth. Some plates are famous for earthquakes. One of these famous places is called the Ring of Fire. It is where plates underneath the ocean meet plates underneath the land. And on this map, you can follow the red line with your finger. And this is called the Ring of Fire. And if you'll notice, Hawaii is out there too. And that's why the volcanoes create those islands out there. It's right there in a spot where those, when they slide past each other, that magma can come up. Chapter two, focus on earthquakes. Like a bullseye in the middle of a game of darts, earthquakes have a center point. That is where the two plates hit. The focus is the spot beneath the Earth's surface where an earthquake begins. The spot on Earth's surface directly above the focus is called the epicenter. So they'll say an earthquake happens on the top, it's the epicenter. When it happens below ground, that's the focus part. The amount of damage caused by an earthquake depends on how deep the focus is. Earthquakes with a focus less than 40 miles below the Earth's surface are the most destructive. And this is the result of an earthquake. See where the, the bridge and the road actually gets broken. Waves and actions. What happens when you throw a pebble in a pond or a river, it creates waves. The waves travel in a circle away from the center. That is just like the waves of energy in an earthquake. So an earthquake can happen here, and then the waves of energy go out like that. Earthquake waves travel away from the focus in all directions. There are some different kinds of earthquake waves. Some move through the inside of the earth, others move along the surface. Surface waves cause the most damage. Fast and slow changes. Earth's surface is constantly changing. Some changes are fast, like those caused by an earthquake. Others are very slow. For example, a river carved out the Grand Canyon, and that took millions of years. But over here, earthquakes make very fast changes. In a few minutes, the land is cracked and broken. Earthquakes can also cause mud and rocks to quickly move down mountains. And when that land breaks, buildings tumble. These buildings are people's homes. They could be where they go to school or go to work. 
Before I go any further, I want to talk to you about safety in our schools. Fresno is really not near an epicenter, and we can sometimes feel the aftershocks, but um, our buildings have been built in such a way, in California especially, that if they moved a little bit, will be safer. They have to build our buildings a little bit safer. Um, obviously, you just want to make sure that you, uh, we practice the earthquake drills every year in October, and that's where we get under a table and we protect ourselves. And then we have to exit the building to be safe after the earthquake ends. And yes, I, I've been in an earthquake, uh, but uh, it, the house just moved a little. That's all I felt. So just so you know. And some people are scared of them, some people aren't. Um, earthquake survival. Earthquakes happen very fast. They can be hard to predict, but there are scientists that do predict them. Just so you know, if you want to grow up and be a scientist and study earthquakes, that could be a job you could do. Just saying. Uh, to predict is to be able to tell what is likely to happen in the future. Scientists don't just guess, they have tools on Earth and above Earth to provide information about movements in the crust. Um, history is also used to predict, to predict the earthquakes. Scientists know when and where earthquakes have happened in the past and they look for patterns. So this is Alaska, one of our states, and it has a lot of earthquakes and they keep record of it and the patterns of it. And then under the sea, earthquakes can also happen under the sea. When this happens, it can cause a giant wave and those waves can be taller than a three-story building. When the waves hit land, they destroy everything in their path. So it could happen down here low, and then it creates a big, tall wave of water, which then crashes on the land. That's called a tsunami. Smart buildings. Here's another kind of job you could have. Engineers are scientists who design and build structures to solve problems. First, they come up with ideas. Then they build models of their ideas. Hmm, just like in kindergarten, where we build blocks, and we build them into mini structures, that's a model. If you like playing with blocks, you would love to be an engineer that builds buildings. I'm just saying. Models are very small versions of the real thing. Engineers test their models to make their designs better. And if you haven't yet decided you like playing with blocks, you could grow up and decide you want to play with blocks and still be an engineer, okay? It's for everybody. Using this process, Engineers have created earthquake-proof buildings. The building's frames are shaped like triangles with wide bases, and they're designed to sway back and forth instead of falling down. See those triangles? And then, of course, to the rescue. After an earthquake, the rescue teams move quickly in the area. They bring special helpers like well-trained dogs who can sniff out people who are trapped. Rescue heroes dig through materials and pull people out and the medical teams give them care or rush them to the hospital. So if you end up being a, a trained rescue worker as a job when you grow up, like a firefighter or a doctor, a nurse, a paramedic, or you could also do rescue animals, uh, then if an earthquake happens, you could come and be a helper too. So lots of jobs just from this one topic of earthquakes. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.